What's up everybody, Shane here from 2 Connect 3D Printing. Today we're doing part six on the Varn Legacy build. Welcome back everybody. All right, part six, this is the final part of the build for the Varn Legacy. We're working on electronics and wiring today. Not 100% sure how I'm gonna show you guys how to do all this, but I'm just gonna go over all the different parts you're gonna need for this part of the build. Now this is going to be a very time consuming part of the build because getting all these wires to the right length. Uh, thankfully, all of the electronics is pretty much in the back. So it makes it pretty easy to get all the wiring done. But some of the things from the hot end, like one of the fans only has like a six inch lead on it. So I need to add a lot more wire to that. We're going to get all of the motors wired up, all of our sensors, the heated bed, all that stuff. But before we get into that, let's go ahead and show you all the different parts here that you're gonna need. Okay, so there's lots of different things here, but let's start with the printed parts first. So the printed part you need first is gonna be the actual electronics enclosure. Now this one is modified because I'm using a slightly larger fan than what comes with it because I didn't wanna buy a new fan. But other than that, this is the bone stock uh, Volan Legacy enclosure. It is a little bit difficult to print in ABS because of this honeycomb pattern. So this is actually printed in so either PLA or PTG, I think this is printed in PETG, but that's okay because there's really nothing getting hot in there. The other printed part we need, so this is actually two parts. You're gonna need the uh, this little bracket here. So this is the power supply support. So these two are what's gonna hold all of electronics and our power supply. See so our power supply, we're using a mean well. This is an LRS 350 24, but this is a 24 volt slim power supply. It's what they call for. For the fan, I'm going ahead and use this uh, industrial 80 millimeter knock to a fan. These are great. I use these in one of my other builds. It blows a lot of air, and I'm also going to go ahead and use a knock to a. This is a low noise adapter. This came with lots of my other Noctua fans, but this is just gonna make it a little bit quieter. It's not gonna spin as much. For our main board, we're gonna go ahead and use an SKR 1.3. Tried and true, I've had this sitting around for a while, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this. Next up is a Pi Zero W. I wanted to use a Pi Zero Two W, but they are like crazy expensive and hard to find, so we're gonna use Gen 1. That'll work out just fine. Because one of my fans in the uh, hot end is 12 volt. I'm going to need a buck converter. So this is going to take my 24 volts down to 12 volt for that fan. I have a screen here. This is the FISEC. Oh, what's this one? This is the 12864 panel. It's RGB. So this uh, right here, it lights up and you can change the color of the screen. I don't know if I'm putting this on, but this is what is called for if you're going to be putting in a screen on your machine. Then we have our power switch, uh, it's fuse. I believe this is a 10 amp fuse in here. It might be actually a 15 amp, I'm not sure, but we're gonna have to get all this wired up. It's got our switch in it. Two cables for our LCD screen. We need five cables for all the different motors. I have here a simple power cable. This is gonna run power from the power supply to the board. So this is just a 16 gauge red and black. And then I have a, this is either 18 or I think it's 20 gauge uh, red and black. This is gonna be for extending that fan from the hot end assembly down to the uh, main board. Got a little bit of the corrugated split tubing. I do have some of the textile stuff that like Prusa uses. I don't know which one to use, but I have this old power supply cable. So this is a three conductor cable. This is what we're gonna use to power or to wire our power switch to the power supply. So we're gonna go ahead and use that because it's already 16 gauge wire. And that is all of the materials that you need for this. Now we need to go on to some of the supplies we're gonna to need to be able to build this. Now we have a lot of crimps that we need to do. So we're gonna have two different types of crimpers. This is for JST and DuPonts. And this here is for the wire ferrules. And then here is all the different connectors. So again, we have uh, wire ferrules, these are going for, for any of the screw down terminals on our board, you wanna use a wire ferrule. JSTs, this is for me to be able to make custom length motor cables. You don't have to do this, but I'm probably going to. So I have those here. We're gonna need some shrink tubing. So I just have a big pack of shrink tubing that I got off of Amazon, all different uh, colors and sizes for whatever you need it for. This is really good to have around. And then insulated connectors. Now we're gonna need these for connecting all of our wires to the actual power supply to make sure we get a real good connection on those. 
Okay, so now I know pretty much everything we need. I'm gonna go ahead and show you where we're gonna install the electronics enclosure, the power supply, and then I'm gonna work on the wiring. All right, so we're at the printer. We're gonna go ahead and flip this around. And we've got our power supply box. So I also put in the heat inserts and this is just going right here in the back left side. So when you put this in, it has three spots for an M5 by 10. But before we do that, we do need to go ahead and attach our power supply. So we're gonna go ahead and get this. It's just going to sit. So it's gonna sit just like that. Our fan is blowing out the back. Okay, so our terminals are up here towards the top. And all we need to do now is, and this is where we're gonna put uh, two M4 by six millimeters to hold in our power supply. Okay, so that's gonna sit in there like that. And again, just before we finish that up, we do have our PSU bracket, which just goes right on here. And you want the, the down L towards where your fan is, that's gonna go on the back here. So again, this is just a M4 by six or eight mil screw. This is also the time you should take to go ahead and switch your power supply to whatever your voltage is, okay? I'm gonna be running mine off of 115, so that's what I'm gonna set that to. Now, we can, almost ready to put this in, but we need to go ahead and prep our, um, our screw. So we're using M5 by 10s in here with some just drop-in T-nuts. All right, now we have all those in. Go ahead and put in side. Okay, I took a little bit of fiddling to get this guy down here in, but um, it's in now. I've tightened all of these up. Now it's real nice because inside this case, there are a few different mounting options. So our SKR, thankfully, fits in very nicely onto these standoffs. These are gonna be using some M3 by probably like six mil will work out just fine. And then right over here, we have all the standoffs we need for our Pi Zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those installed and then we can go on from there. Okay, so those are installed now. I had to pre-drill all of the ones for the M3s. They were just a little bit too tight. And then these are using M2. So the same self-tapping screws that you use for the end stops are the same ones you're gonna go ahead and use to install your Pi, uh, your Pi Zero. So yeah, now we're going to work on the actual power switch. Now for the power switch, I'm actually not going to go through how to actually wire that up. There are a ton of videos and I'm not an electrician. So you kind of have to do that on your own and figure that out. But again, ton of videos out there, but this is going to end up going just like so. Okay. So we need to leave enough lead on there so I can be able to actually take this off. I'll be able to just tuck the wires up underneath there. But that's how that's going to go. And then we also are going to need to install our fan which I think I'm just gonna end up using some fan screws because that's what comes with the fan. Our fan is gonna go right outside, just like that. Uh, I probably will end up 3D printing some type of a grill to go over this because I don't have anything right now, I don't think, but this is an 80 millimeter fan, so I think that's easy enough to find something to put on top of that just to make this not be so dangerous. Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my switch wired up, get the fan installed, and then we'll move on from there. Okay, so I have the main board in here uh, wired up with power going to the power supply. The switch obviously here looks like it's powered. Uh, I have my Raspberry Pi Zero W in here with a uh, DC to DC converter in here. So taking the 24 volts down to the necessary uh, five volts for that. And then I have another one right down here. It's hard to see from this angle, but this one is, a, is set for 12 volts. So that is taking the 24 down to 12 for my fan cable, the fan there, cause it's 12 volts. I also will be using that for my always on fan and actually have it wired through the, the HE1, so hot in one header. So that means every time the hot end gets up to 50 degrees, this fan, the cooling fan and the hot end fan will turn on so that the cold, which just cools the heatsink on the uh, hot end there. So both of those will turn on at 50 degrees at full blast, which is great. That's what I want it to do. And because if the printer is not on and printing, there's no reason for this fan to be on. 
just like on power supply, they have an automatic fan for temperature as well. So this way it's not always on and I save the fan and I also save on noise. Now that that is all done, I'm gonna go ahead and get my wire bundle or several of them. So I have this here. So this is some of the stuff from the motors and the bed. And then I have everything here from the hot end that needs to get wired up. This fan here needs to be extended. This is actually my 12 volt fan that needs to go down to this buck as well in here. So I'm gonna get all of that wired and then I will go ahead and show you where, how that looks and then we'll switch over to the motors and get all of those wired up. All right, so I'm back, so I'm a little bit further. So I have all of the cables basically from the top of the printer run down through this split core the tubing stuff, all zip tied in and basically just got a mess here right now. So I have to kind of tidy these up. I've shortened some of the cables that I wanted to shorten up, put new connectors on them. I had to extend some cables so those extensions are all put in and everything is now connected to the board. I still have the two uh, Z motors to uh, cable manage and wire in. So I still need to get a few more of the uh, zip tie 3D printed parts basically. So zip tie goes through there and holds on to our cabling. So I need to get a few more for here, but those are both gonna go in the hole right down here heated bed and thermistor cables go here through the bottom. So those are nice and tidied up now. So yeah, it's just now just finishing those connections and getting everything tidied up. And then I should be able to power it on and make sure we don't get any magic smoke. So I'll show you this once I have everything kind of tidied up and in there. Uh, again, there are tons of guides on how to wire these different boards. You can use some of the Voron guides on how to do them. And I'm not gonna dive into that, but there is the electronics mostly done, I'll be back in a minute. Well, can't really do a whole lot better in here. So what I've tried to do is I've tried to move some of these cables. I've kind of rolled them over and trying to put them just down a little further. The main things to cool on a 3D printer board are the stepper drivers. So there's plenty of airflow down for the actual CPU of the board. That's not really a problem. It's really you want to make sure these heat sinks get they're cooling. So that's why I'm gonna kind of roll these over here a little bit more. I might detach them. I kind of have them mostly scrunched together. But again, it's just a little bit difficult right now to figure it out. And then the case rolls over and will kind of shimmy into place there. Uh, so keeping this open for this gigantic uh, plug part, it's a really, really tight um, box. There's not a whole lot of space in there, but I am able to um, get that down with not much force, which is good because uh, we don't want to really squish these too hard. So now I'm going to do is before I actually seal it up, I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to power it on and see if I can go ahead and get connected to my Raspberry Pi, which I've already imaged and try to get some of the configuration done on how to do that. Again, tons of videos out there on how to configure that. I'm not gonna go through that here, but at least I'm gonna try to get it connected and then try to move some of these motors and see where we stand. So I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, uh, I kind of changed my mind. I redid some things. So I ended up doing the Raspberry Pi Zero W via UART because I could not get my homemade USB cable that I used to use to work. Uh, I don't know what's up with it, but I just know it's not working anymore. So I had to end up going with UART, reprogram everything. And then I did tidy up and shorten a bunch of the cables. I actually found some other ones to have better secure connections using JST connectors instead of some of them that I had with DuPonts. Uh, so it's pretty tidied up now, not too bad. The only thing I really have left to do is uh, tidy up one of the cables right here. Uh, I need to print some more mounts for that. Uh, and then put the case on, but that's gonna be it for this. So I think we can now go ahead and wrap up this episode. All right, and that's how the electronics and wiring is done on this. Uh, I hope that was a good way for you guys to kind of ingest all that information. Uh, I, again, I didn't go into crazy detail with some of it because again, if you're building this and you're getting that far, you kind of probably know what you're doing because you're printing your own machine. But anyways, I think it looks absolutely great. I mean, just the way that it's so managed, it's so nice and clean looking. I just, I really did enjoy doing the wiring on this and getting it down to as minimum as I could and getting everything 
working for the most part. So, so, so far I don't have a Z probe on here. That's gonna be the next video, but I do have X and Y working on here. Uh, all the fans work the way they should. The bed heats up, hot end heats up. All the probes are working, clippers on the Raspberry Pi Zero, obviously to make all that happen. So the configuration part of this will be a little bit later, but yeah, so far everything that I've put on here as of right now is working that I've tested. We'll get the Z axis and extruder tested once I get the um, probe on there. On all, this is a time consuming, but fairly easy part, because again, if you're printing this, you probably have other printers that you've already done. Maybe you've built a Prusa or a DIY machine, or you're just experienced with 3D printers. And yeah, I'm beating that dead, dead horse. Um, anyways, yeah, I'm very happy. So the next part is going to be the clicky probe. We're gonna do that, a dedicated video on that because I also need to learn how to do it. I have all the parts printed and I need to figure out how to assemble that and get it moving. So we're gonna do that in the next part, but for this one, we're done. And I thank you guys for tuning in. Again, if you found this video useful, or if you enjoyed it, thumbs up, leave a comment down below what you think. Uh, again, I really do hope that this helps people out, says there is no official documentation. So if it does, let me know. If you guys support the channel, best thing, go down to Discord actually. So go down there, hang out with us. Uh, it's no cost to you, but if you're working on something or if you have questions on 3D printing, go down there. If you wanna financially support me, there's a bunch of links down below. Patreon, buy me a coffee. Affiliate links are great because it's no cost to you. A little piece of what you buy comes here to me so that I can buy the parts to build these printers and keep doing what I love to do here and that's make videos. So thank you all for tuning in. I'll see y'all next time and happy printing.